Hi, everyone. This is Carrick. This class is focused on the shoulders, specifically on scapular stabilization. So um, your shoulder blades are these big, flat, triangular bones. Uh, they slide around on your upper back. Um, you can actually feel them. Um, and then the, we'll do two things. We'll work on two things. Um, protraction is going to be the shoulder blades sliding off the back. So like if I round my back, um, like the, the fabric across my shirt gets tight and you can see it stretch. And then, so that's protraction. And then retraction is the shoulder blades um, moving towards each other. Now you don't have to, when I say, I'm probably going to say draw your shoulder blades towards each other a bunch of times. You don't have to make them touch. As a matter of fact, if you touch the shoulder blades together, you're probably um, doing a little too much. You're probably working too hard. Some of you who are super mobile, you can even overlap your shoulder blades. That's way too much. So it's just bringing the shoulder blades flat onto your back. Uh, not really any much more than that. And then the other, the other way that we'll work on the shoulder blades is, um, so depression is when the shoulder blades move down the back as opposed to elevation. We're, I can't think of too often in yoga, if at all, where we ask you to elevate your shoulder blades. Okay, so the shoulder blades would rise up. All right. Generally, what we're working on is um, depression. So you're pulling your shoulder blades down your back. So here's, here's what we're trying not to do. And then shoulder blades. And then, you know, my arms move up too. Because the arm bones, uh, the humerus, um, and the shoulder blade, the top of the shoulder blade, um, it's called the acromion. Uh, and the clavicle, which is your collarbone, they come together to make the shoulder joint. Okay, so pulling the shoulder blades down the back will cause the um, the arms to drop, the head of the humerus to drop. So we're going to move the shoulder blades around in a bunch of different poses. It will be harder in some poses um, and more, a little easier in other poses. Um, let's start on all fours, hands and knees. All right, so on hands and knees, um, you know we often start with a cat cow, which is Inhale to drop your belly uh, and your chest towards the ground and look up and stick your butt out. And then exhale to round your back. Now do that a couple of times and just notice what happens to your shoulder blades. When you round your back, the shoulder blades will slide off to the sides. That's the protraction. And then when you bend your back, belly down, head back and hips back, the shoulder blades will come closer together. That's the retraction. Okay, so now, instead of moving your spine up and down and tilting your pelvis back and forth, um, just move the upper back. So to protract the shoulder blades to get them to separate, push your hands into the ground and then push the, um, your upper back towards the sky. And then do the opposite, drop your heart towards the ground and then let the shoulder blades come closer together. Again, they don't have to touch. You don't have to bring them all the way together. And then just sort of floss your shoulder blades a little bit um, for a couple of breaths. So you can inhale to drop the heart and draw the shoulder blades in, and then exhale to push out. And just see how much movement you can get in the upper back. A couple more rounds. Exhale to round, inhale to drop the heart and draw the shoulder blades in. And then instead of thinking about like dropping the heart or um, moving the spine, now, just see if you can just move the shoulder blades back and forth, okay? The muscles between the shoulder blades, the rhomboids, are the ones that draw the shoulder blades together, right? So you're firing the, um, the muscles in between the shoulder blades to pull the shoulder blades in. And then there's also this passive release as well. So at some point, the rhomboids will contract fully, and then you just soften, and then the shoulder blades will come together a little more. All right, one more round. And then let's work a little bit on the depression. So pull your shoulder blades towards your hips. And then just for a little bit, you can uh, shrug your shoulders forward. So move the shoulder blades, slide your shoulder blades back towards your hips, and then slightly forward. And then again, your spine will move too. OK, so I can, I can just focus on sliding the shoulder blades forward and then pulling the shoulder blades down towards my hips. All right, one more round of breath. And then curl your toes under and lift your hips up and back to down dog. OK, so now in down dog, um, here are the actions to focus on. Lift the tops of the arm bones up. OK, so the humerus lifts up. And then pull your shoulder blades, the depression, 
towards your butt, okay? So your, uh, the tops of the shoulders will move away from your ears as you pull your shoulder blades down towards your hips. Okay, keep that. Now, with your lower arms, um, turn the lower arms in so your thumbs press deeper into the mat, but turn your upper arms out so the inner biceps rise and the outer triceps drop. You should feel a widening, that's the protraction, across the upper back. Now, to get the shoulder blades back onto your back, here's that passive um, muscular energy I was talking about earlier. Drop your heart towards the ground, and then your shoulder blades squeeze in towards the middle a little bit more. So there's this sort of a dynamic tension between the upper back widening, right? So broaden across your upper back, widen your biceps, right? And you feel this width, this opening across the upper back, and then drop your heart towards the floor and the shoulder blades secure onto your back. Okay, and that combination of those two actions really um, draws the shoulder girdle uh, into the proper place. Okay, so your shoulder blades are securely on your back. Look forward and walk your feet to the front of the mat. So now we're going to move a little bit, and the idea is to keep the shoulder blades on the back while you move. Okay, so inhale and lengthen. Pull your shoulder blades towards your hips and keep them flat on your backs. So hug the midline by firing the rhomboids. Exhale to fold. You can bend your knees. Now here, immediately when I go into the forward bend, my shoulders drop towards my head. Um, they they elevate in relation to my upper body, and then they start to widen and protract. So even when I fold in here now, so come up halfway, it's easier to get the shoulder blades onto the back um, because you move into a slight back bend as you lift your chest. And then as you move into the forward bend, see if you can keep the shoulder blades in place on the back. Let's do two more. Inhale, shoulder blades towards the hips and towards the midline. Keep that, shoulder blades towards the hips and towards the midline, exhale and fold. See if you can maintain that neutral position of the shoulder blades. Just one more time, inhale halfway forward, exhale to fold. Push your feet down, make them steady. Inhale and sweep your arms up over your head. Exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Okay, so now as you drop the arms, squeeze the midline with the bottom tips of the shoulder blades, but keep the tops of the shoulders wide. Pull your shoulder blades towards your hips so the, e the shoulders drop away from the ears. All right, hold that. So. There's often a tendency when you lift your arms up for the shoulder blades to elevate along with the arms. So now the challenge is to keep the shoulder blades down your back as you lift your arms up to the sky, right? Unlock your knees, keep your shoulder blades pulling towards your hips, keep the shoulder blades on the back, fold forward and touch the ground, right? So be aware of, and I just lost it, I can feel as soon as I folded forward, it's easy for me to lose my shoulder blades. I'm gonna keep them on the back, inhale, come up halfway, Exhale, plant your hands, step back to plank. Lift the tops of the shoulders, pull your shoulder blades towards your hips. The tops of the shoulders are moving away from the ears. And then squeeze the bottom tips of the shoulder blades towards the middle, fire the rhomboids. All right, keep your rib cage pulled in and up. All right, now maintain that. Keep the shoulder blades in place securely on the back and then lower to the bottom of your push-up. Inhale to cobra. Draw your shoulders back, reach your heart forward. So it's pretty easy to keep the shoulder blades on the back in the cobra, in the back bend. Exhale, now, now we're gonna move into a forward bend. Keep the shoulder blades pulling towards your hips and towards the center line. Push back to down dog. I have to be very conscious. Moving into the forward bends for me really starts to pull my shoulder blades away from the middle and up, even up towards my ears. So here, from your hands, draw into your heart, and along the way, the energy pulls the shoulders away from the ears. Widen across the upper back just for a moment, get some space, make some space, and then drop your heart towards the ground, and the shoulder blades pull towards the midline. Look forward, bend your knees, walk your feet to the front of the mat. Inhale to lengthen, reach your heart forward. Exhale to fold. All right, interlace your fingers behind your back. All right, so now with the fingers interlaced behind the back, then the shoulder blades squeeze in pretty easily. They get forced in. Okay, so now protract, widen the shoulder blades at the top. So make the tops of your shoulders wide out to the sides. Keep the width, as much width as you can, and then reach your chest towards the ground, reach your head towards the ground, 
reach your hands towards the sky, and then start to draw your hands forward, over. And then now you can really feel here um, the shoulder blades very securely on the back if your hands are interlaced and you've got the hands moving forward. It's going to squeeze the shoulder blades towards the middle. All right, release the hands to the ground. Inhale, halfway forward, lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands, pull your shoulder blades towards your hips and away from your ears. Step back to plank. All right, so then here in plank, let's practice the protraction and retraction. So protracting is rounding the back. So I push the floor away and I can round my back and then retract, I can soften and let the shoulder blades come onto my back. All right, so let's do that a couple of times, just flossing. It's a little harder in plank because right, you have to support your body weight. All right, so just adding a little bit of stress, a little bit of challenge. All right, a couple of rounds. On the inhales, uh, let the heart be soft. Uh, let gravity take over. Not in your core, just in the upper spine. And then the shoulder blades come together, closer together. And then push the floor away. Move the shoulder blades away. So we're increasing our ability um, to protract and retract the shoulder blades. And then also just creating an awareness in the muscles that we're using to move the shoulder blades around. All right, so pause in neutral now. Shoulders wide, upper back soft, right? and then shoulder blades just flat on your back. Keep that, hold that, lower to the bottom and push up. Inhale to cobra, exhale to down dog. Keep the arm bones lifted, pull your shoulder blades towards your hips, and then widen across the upper back, drop your heart towards the ground, shoulder blades in neutral, flat on the back. All right, step your right foot forward. Spin the back heel flat. Let's come up to a warrior two. All right, so warrior two, I can practice now with the arms out, just in a different plane, out to the sides. We've had the arms in the overhead plane quite a bit um, and in the front plane in plank, so now side plane out to the sides. So from here, um, from your fingertips, draw into the center of your heart so you can overextend just for as a point of contrast. And then from your fingertips, draw into the heart, pulling the shoulder blades more towards the center line. So if you can even bring your hand slightly forward and you'll feel the protraction in the upper back, the shoulder blades slide off. And then as you pull in, as you pull from your hands to your heart, the shoulder blades slide more towards the center. So from here, hands slightly forward. And then as I move them out, I can squeeze my shoulder blades onto my back. Keep that. From your hips, stretch your legs, stretch your arms. Just one more breath. And then straighten the front leg, turn the right foot in, turn the left foot out. Second side, bend the front knee. All right, so one more time now. Okay, and then in addition now, so we can work on keeping the shoulder blades on the back this way, but then also keeping the shoulder blades down on the back, okay, as opposed to rising up. So if I'm, I'm gonna exaggerate, but if I roll my hands forward, so my palms face you. You see my shoulder, shoulders hunch over, and then the shoulder blades are rising up, okay? So now, if I flip my palms up, I can pull the shoulder blades down my back. My, the tops of my shoulders move away from my ears, and I keep that, then I flip the palms back over, right? So in two directions, I'm working to keep my shoulder blades flat on the back. Um, they're moving to the center, and they're moving down. All right, just one more breath here. Let's take a down dog at the back of the mat. Okay, so then in some of the positions, you get the, like gravity helps you shift to a side plank and stretch the other arm up. So here on my left side, the side that uh, has the weight on it, um, the arm bone is being pushed into the socket because the weight of my body um, is setting the humerus into the shoulder socket. Okay, so I get, the, I get the retraction, the shoulder blades coming towards the middle, kind of for free here. All right, so I'm mainly gonna focus now on pulling my shoulder blades towards my hips, and then if I push my heart forward, the shoulder blades retract even more, stabilizing. So when the shoulder blades are on the back, let's just switch to the other side. When your shoulder blades are on your back, the, 
the shoulder girdle gets more stable. So I can hold this position much more easily when I, when I depress and retract the shoulder blade, when I pull the shoulder blade down and in towards the middle. Right? And then it stabilizes the shoulder girdle so I can balance. All right, head back, shoulders back, heart forward. Lean back, maybe look up. And then both hands back to the ground, down dog. Let's come down to uh, forearm plank. All right, interlace your fingers, put your forearms on the ground. Set your shoulders over your elbows, and then pause here. All right, so now, one more time, just protracting, push your forearms down and round your upper back. You can even lift your hips. All right, and then, then back to almost a back bend where you drop your heart towards the center, uh, towards the ground, and then the shoulder blades come in, and then just a couple of times, rounding, and down, rounding, and down. And really, what we want in most yoga poses is neutral. All right, so somewhere in the middle. So I'm not rounded, and I'm not in a back bend here. Somewhere in the middle. Again, shoulder blades flat on the back. Some of you have so much um, flexibility or mobility in your shoulder blades that you can almost drop your shoulder blades in towards each other, so they, they go in. Um, most of us, it's pretty easy to go out, so really neutral, so um, parallel to the ground or just flat on your back is how you can think about it. Okay, so heart soft, shoulder blades pulling towards each other but not touching, and shoulder blades pulling towards your hips. At the same time, keep your rib cage pulled in, and then this will stabilize your uh, plank. Uh, whether you're on your hands or down on your elbows. Just one more breath. And then come down. Okay, one more position um, I like to try. You can do this, you can do this against a wall. I think I'm going to do this right here in the middle of the room so that you can see my back. Okay, that's the only reason I'm doing it facing you. I could easily move against the wall and do the headstand against the wall. So hands back in the, or arms are going to be back in kind of this overhead position. Um, let's do headstand one first. So fingers interlaced, elbows and hands about equidistant. Okay, so the distance between the class of my hands and this elbow is the same as the distance be from elbow to elbow. If you want to check that, you can grab opposite elbows and then, then interlace the fingers. Okay. Uh, you can either squeeze your wrists together or separate the wrist, but if you separate the wrist, you have to keep your wrist straight, okay? The tendency will be for the wrist to bow out, but that's not very supportive for your head. All right, you're potentially up against the wall unless you're very comfortable in the middle of the room. Head down, forearms down. All right, and then go ahead, go up. Now, here, all right, shoulder blades, towards the middle, squeeze the middle. So I'm just gently hugging them in. And then the tops of my arm bones move towards the back plane of my body. I press my heart forward. That's also helping to squeeze the shoulder blades onto my back. Okay, so heart forward. Keep your rib cage pulled in, core engaged. Now from your, we'll pull your shoulder blades up towards your heels. I don't know if I can, yeah, I guess I can. So if, if I don't, if I lose that, if I lose the shoulder blades, the depression, which is up and because we're upside down, right, then it would look like this. This does not feel good. I can't do it for very long. All right, my shoulder blades are sliding down. So now I pull the shoulder blades up and I get much more stable. I can hold this for a lot longer. It's a little more work, right, to, um, pull the shoulder blades towards the heels, but I'm much more stable and I can hold the headstand for a lot longer. Just two more breaths. One more breath. Okay, come down for a second and rest. We're gonna switch headstands. We're gonna switch to headstand two. Um, so in headstand two, your arms are in the forward position as opposed to hands behind the head, which the arms, the humerus is in the, it's, it's straight up, it's in the overhead position. 
All right, so slightly different position. Um, because the hands are a little more forward, it might cause a little more of the protraction, the widening of the shoulder blades. So you may have to focus a little more on squeezing in. Um, keeping the shoulder blades on the back again, it's, it's all about stabilization. This is a very mobile joint. Um, it's designed to let us reach you know, across the front of the body, uh, behind us, overhead, uh, in all of these different directions. Um, but then in, in the yoga practice, we're often working on stabilizing the joint. Um, and, and we work on stretching and stretching the joint as well and creating mobility. But um, often we're working on stabilizing the joint so that when we move in different directions, uh, we have the strength to keep the joint safe, okay? So here we go. So now, we're, the reason that we're doing the headstands is um, we're putting stress on the body, we're challenging the body, putting you under slightly adverse conditions, and then the idea is if you can keep your shoulder blades securely on your back when you're upside down, um, in, in a position where your arms are in front of you, then uh, you'll, you'll have to engage um, in a way that, that's healthy, that kind of trains you for, you know, creating shoulder, the scapular stabilization when you're reaching for your bag in the back of your car or when you're, um, when you're throwing uh, an object or a baseball or swinging uh, your arm, okay? So here we go. Last, last big pose. Top of the head. Hands about shoulder width apart. Right. Again, you can be up against the wall I'm just here so I can hopefully demonstrate some of the actions here. So if my elbows are too far forward, you'll see the protraction, the widening of my upper back. So I'm going to squeeze my shoulder blades onto my back and pull my elbows in. I want to pull the head of the humerus, the arm bones, deep into the sockets. Okay, and then I'm squeezing the middle with my upper back and I'm pulling my shoulder blades up towards my heels. And then that steadiness makes my, the shoulder girdle stronger and I can balance. If, if I relax all of that, if, if I, and I'm not even gonna do it, if I relax my shoulder blades right now, I will fall over. Okay, so I'm hugging the middle with the shoulder blades and I'm pulling my shoulder blades up towards my heels. And then I can feel this, like my, my upper back is, is working pretty hard in a good way, right? So I can, I can feel all of the muscles um, underneath. The rhomboids are, are some of the main muscles. There's some other muscles that are moving um, the shoulder blades as well, but um, I can feel my rhomboids, the, the muscles between the shoulder blades quite a bit. Um, and then in the tops of the shoulders, you have some muscles that are helping to um, stabilize the, the, the shoulder girdle as well. So um, if you feel a little tired after this practice, um, you know, tops of the shoulders, uh, in your upper back, um, then you might be using some muscles that you don't always um, engage. Okay, um, last pose. Um, let's come into child's pose. Touch your toes together and open your knees wide. Reach your arms forward. Um, lift your inner arm bones up. Widen across your upper back and then soften your heart towards the ground. And then here, um, you can just be a little more passive. Let the heart get pulled towards the ground by gravity and feel the shoulder blades just sort of settle more towards the midline. Now, if that's not happening, you might have to be a little more active about it. Push your chest towards the ground, squeeze your shoulder blades towards the middle. So for some of you getting the shoulder blades to sit flat on your upper back, you, you won't have to work very hard. You, you, you'll be able to get the shoulder blades flat on your back quite easily. Um, and then the challenge will be more to maintain them flat on the back under the different conditions. Actually, let's do one more pose. I almost forgot. So uh, to stretch across the upper back, most of what we've been doing is contracting and engaging um, the muscles of the upper back to hold the shoulder blades on the back. Um, to stretch, sorry, I keep turning around. Cross your right arm over your left arm, cross the elbows. If you can, you can double wrap the arms and place your palms together, but your, your hands don't twist at all. Your palms should face each other 
uh, thumbs towards your nose. Right? If, you can, if you just cross your arms, that works just as well. If this is not possible, just reach across and grab opposite shoulders, okay? So this is gonna create the protraction, the separation of the shoulder blades off the back, right? And then move your elbows up to about shoulder height. Now, it, this is tough. Now retract the shoulder blades, squeeze the shoulder blades towards the middle with your arms crossed, and then push your arms into each other simultaneously fire the rhomboids, the muscles between the shoulder blades, and widen the collarbones. Okay, and you'll feel this opening, hopefully get an opening across the upper back, a stretch, but not straining. So you're firing the rhomboids against the widening of the collarbones, against the squeezing of your arms together, right? so that the, the muscles are engaged as you stretch them. Let's do the other side. Cross the arms the other way. Squeeze your palms together or squeeze your elbows together or just um, give yourself, if you're just wrapping here, crawl your hands towards the back, towards your back, and then the upper back widens. But at the same time that you widen and stretch the upper back, keep the, the rhomboids engaged. Keep the shoulder blades squeezing towards the middle isometrically while you're using the, the power of your arms to protract the shoulder blades kind of manually. All right. So that's a really great way to open up the upper back um, if you feel tight there. For most of us, these muscles are overstretched because we're rounded forward at our desks, in our cars, on our devices. This gets rounded forward. So the, the muscles of the upper back get overstretched and they're pretty weak. So then in yoga, we can work on pulling the tops of the arm bones back, finding the shoulder blades neutral on the upper spine um, as a way of strengthening the upper back, as a way of strengthening um, those muscles. So um, you, can, you can really do this work in almost any pose. So in, in various yoga poses, you can think about and practice um, pulling your shoulder blades flat onto your back as a way of stabilizing and see how it affects the pose. Very often, like in arm balances and um, handstands, inversions, um, it will stabilize the upper back, which will in turn help stabilize your arms, which will in turn stabilize the pose. So you can practice um, the scapular strengthening um, in, in other yoga poses, not just the ones that we did today. Okay, that's it for now. I will see you next time.